All right. Thank you all for joining us today. Welcome to Virtual Viewing Rooms Connection When It Counts. Um, this is a joint effort by Jackrabbit Class, Spot TV, and USA Gymnastics. Um, we're really excited to give you some information on how you can use virtual viewing rooms and then some other options that you can use in the meantime. I just want to cover some housekeeping really quickly. Um, everyone is in listen only mode. Um, that will just make sure that we all have a great experience. If you have a question during the webinar, you can submit it through the Q&A and we will have a Q&A section at the very end. Um, so you can submit those along and then we'll go through those at the very end. And this meeting is being recorded, so that way you can watch it after or share with some of your teammates after the fact. Um, my name is Amber Smith and I'm with Jackrabbit Class and the Client Marketing Specialist. We also have Bobby and Sam here from Spot TV. Um, they're going to talk about how you can use Spot TV as a virtual viewing room and some safety and security measures. And then we also have Shelba from USAG Safe Sport, and she's going to talk about how you can stay compliant and um, work through this new normal that we're all experiencing. So. Um, some topics that we're going to cover during this um, webinar include um, some new frontier ideas, safe sport trends. We're going to introduce who Spot TV is in case you're not familiar, um, what your setup options are, benefits of a camera system, benefits of a virtual viewing room, um, and then we're going to dive deeper into securities and Stream Shield, how everything works together. We're going to look at a provider checklist and show you how Jackrabbit and Spot TV integrate, um, some exclusive partner pricing, and online, co online coaching recommendations. Um, and then at the very end, we will do the Q&A session. But before we jump into the content today, I do want to launch a poll and just get to know a little bit about who you guys are so that we know who we are working with today. So you will see a poll show up on your screen. It's just three questions and we made a multiple choice so you can answer really quickly. Um, so we want to know who you are. What is your role at your organization? Um, before COVID-19, how many students were active in your program? This is just a rounding. And when do you plan to reopen your doors? And we know that you may not have that answer right now, but what is your projection today? And I see all the answers coming in. This is awesome. I believe Zoom's gonna give it a few more seconds for everyone to get their answers in. Okay, so it looks like we have a lot of owners and managers on the line, which is pretty much what I expected. Um, a lot of you are anywhere between 250 and 1,000 um, students that were active in your gym. And a lot of you would like to reopen your doors sometime this summer. Um, so. Some of you are in a holding pattern for now, but majority of you are looking at the summer and a few for the fall. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Bobby. Oh, we're going straight in. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm Shalba from USA Gymnastics, and I'm the Director of Education and Training for Safe Sport. Um, and the reason why I'm on this is that we wanted to address a lot of the questions coming into our office regarding safe sport, the compliance to safe sport, but also the compliance to COVID. And um, I want to start saying that there's just simply no easy solution to any of this. And um, it's just new for everybody. And um, I want to start with saying, if you have any questions, if you're, you are a USA Gymnastics member or just a gymnastics club, and you want to just I and you want to call and brainstorm some solutions with me. Uh, we have that door open. That is my job. That's what I'm here to do. 
Um, every state has a completely different way of doing it. And then the more we are hearing from club owners is every club, or even within those states, the various districts and cities and counties have different rules for them. So one of the things that we struggle with on our end is putting out blanket information saying, this is mandatory for everybody because we can't do that because even within one state, the rules changed. So if you are struggling with having any, um, trying to find the solutions, um, feel free to call and brainstorm with me because we are hearing from some club owners who have some really great ideas going and we're gonna address some of those ideas a little bit later. But what I wanna say is that there doesn't have to be an either or. I realize in some of the states, um, there's actually a rule that has been stated that you can't have anybody in your lobby which then takes out, then begs the question of what do we do now? Like we have children there and we have parents who wanna watch, but nobody can come in our lobby. So what do we do? That is the extreme. Then we have what's the middle ground, which is the majority of the states that uh, sit somewhere in the middle of, you can, you can only be at 50% capacity or 25% capacity, or everybody has to wash their hands before they come to the door. Everybody has to have their, um, temperature check before coming into the door. There's a lot of rules that each state is doing. So my recommendation is actually probably not the one you wanna hear, but it is a simple communication to the families, making sure that they understand what restrictions that you are put under by your state, first of all. So they don't jump to conclusions. And one of the things that we see in the Safe Sport office when um, we see a lot of cases or reports that are very valid, very real issues that are happening. Then we see some reports that come from, a, from um, either poor communication or a lack of communication between the club and the family. And so between one or the other, there's a lot of assumptions being made. So my first recommendation is making sure that you're communicating regularly and openly with your family so they understand what they are gonna be held to when they walk through your door again. Okay. And then, and as well as your staff and how you plan on keeping the athletes safe and making sure that the parents understand that, that you're doing everything in your power, that um, you're following all sets of guidelines and that your first priority is the children. And um, which I absolutely believe it, that is your priority. Um, you wouldn't be in business if, it, if children weren't your priority. So just making sure that the parents understand that and that you're doing your best, that would be the first step. And then the second thing, step is using the parents to your benefit. A lot of clubs, especially some of the larger ones, have, well, actually, a lot of clubs um, have parents who are experts in various fields of medicine, safety, policy. Um, and so surveying your parents and asking how they can help. Parents want, I'm a parent, I'm a parent of a gymnast, and I want my son to go back. And um, for his sanity, for my sanity, I, we all wanna go back to gymnastics. So as a parent, I want to help the club. I wanna help them succeed. I want uh, my child to succeed. I want the other kids to succeed. So reaching out to the parents, asking for their input, asking for their help is a very good start, especially if you have parents who are experts. We heard from a club last week that has set up a parental task force of experts within their club and they have medical folks they have, um, they, actually, they actually have somebody from FEMA, and this was just happened to be someone, a parent in their club, but it was somebody that they could use to say, hey, could you review our policies? What do you think about this? How do you, you know, in your expertise, what do you, how do you feel? Things like that. And so they've put that parent task force together to offer suggestions. They also are using that parent task force to set up, um, to use those parents to help monitor other parents. So the club owners and the coaches can go to the business of teaching and coaching and running a business and the leaving the parents who are the experts, well, who are experts in their field to help monitor, just like you would do, a lot of our clubs have parent booster organizations, putting the boosters responsible for the other parents, having other parents send out communications is one that we are hearing quite frequently from the clubs that they are letting the booster organization do that type of work for them. And so working together and in tandem with each other. So um, that's my big, big suggestion. Um, we're gonna get a little bit more into safe sport as we get into this so you can understand what, um, what your responsibilities really are. But I didn't wanna spend a lot of time on policy today because this really is about the virtual viewing rooms. 
So let me just put this out there. My, uh, my email address is swaldron, W-A-L-D-R-O-N as in Nancy, at usagym.org, or you can reach us at Safe Sport Policy at usagym.org. And I'm going to talk a little bit later about policy. So Sam, back to you or Bobby. <laughs> oh, it's me again. Yay. Okay. One more. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you have uh, multiple people doing one more. Okay. So this has been coming into our office as well. Before we jump into what, um, what uh, Spot TV and Jackrabbit can offer, um, many, many options that we're hearing about is that there's going to be, at least until everybody is comfortable to opening back up fully and at a 100% capacity, there's going to be a mixture of online versus um, in-house type of, of practice. So, so these are just some um, things that I want you to think about. Um, the Center for Safe Sport has come out with some really good recommendations on how to make sure that um, your coaches, the kids, and everybody is safe online. But we also have some on the USA Gymnastics website, which is some of that you're seeing right now on the slide. Um, also, you, you also want to look at your local school system and see what they are doing and what their rules are. And some, some systems I admit are better than others. But um, chances are if a school or a school district is setting some sort of guideline for the teachers, chances are that guideline is fairly valid. So I wanna put that out there as well. Use other industries to help guide what uh, you plan on doing online or what all you're already doing. But the first thing to remember is under safe sport policy, um, whether it's the U.S. Center for Safe Sport or USA Gymnastics, everything must be open and interruptible. And that's whether you're online or in the gym. So remember that anything that you put online can be and should be, be able to be seen by a parent. You should have other kids. So if it should never be a coach and one student or one athlete. It should be a coach and three athletes or two coaches and three athletes. The more you have, the more basically protection everybody has. Um, any, any platform that you choose online should be approved by the management of your gym. Your manager or your club owner should know which platform you're using and approve it. So nothing is surprising to them. And you need to discuss this as a group. Discuss it with the parents. Most parents now, since all our kids have been home for the past six to eight weeks, we are used to our children being online. But for example, my school district sent us at the beginning of COVID, and then they sent it about three weeks ago, various suggestions on how to keep your children safe online. And it doesn't, um, it won't hurt for you to do the same thing. Um, make sure that the workout sessions and schedules are announced so there's no surprises. It should, it should function just like if you were in the gym. So the kids should know and the parents should know at six o'clock at night, the uh, coach, uh, Coach Bobby is going to um, go through some conditioning with the level six team. And that should be announced. It should be listed on the website. It should be available for anybody to see. Go out to the emails, however you, whether it's you use remind.com or how, what other system you use. Always use the same system you would use if the kids were already in the gym. <laughs> and, and the final thing I want to really press is that um, be mindful of the dress and the location. So, um, it's not appropriate or professional for coaches to be in their bedrooms and the children to have access to view those bedrooms. And, the same, and then at the same time, it's not really appropriate for children to be in their bedrooms or the bathroom or anything that would be a private space that you normally would not want to see. So um, whenever my son, for example, goes online for his school and they do these Zoom calls with their teachers, um, they, they make sure that all the students are in a common area and they will tell, they will say, now is everybody in a common area? And they will start that way um, to make sure that the kids aren't sitting in their bedrooms on their beds. And so, you know, the teachers are then getting a good view of the teddy bears and potential clothing that is sitting, um, you know, how kids aren't exactly neat. So they take off their clothes, they throw it everywhere. So the teachers aren't getting that view of those bedrooms. And the same thing goes in reverse. We are encouraging using the backyard, if you can, the living room, um, and any type of other common space. So um, with that being said, um, now I think I am turning it over to- Yes, <laughs> Shelba, thank you so much. And we're gonna uh, circle back to Shelba and Safe Sport. Um, well, yes, we're gonna dive into some Spot TV uh, solutions and uh, strategies. 
Joe was going to circle back to us later in the presentation on some budget-friendly interim solutions uh, for you guys as well. So what we uh, wanted to do today is really just talk about the virtual viewing room shift in the industry, uh, keeping families uh, connected before, through, uh, and after COVID. Um, Spot TV is really excited about introducing this solution of online streaming. Um, with over a decade of online streaming experience, yes, we're going to talk a little bit about Spot TV. Um, however, our goal for this is for you to leave with a better understanding about online streaming, uh, how it should work, and uh, how it should be applied in the new industry frontier, uh, and then again, some interim strategies. Um, so who is Spot TV? Um, so we know this concept uh, is new to the child care activity, uh, uh, the child activity center industry, but it has been around for over a decade uh, in neighboring and similar industries. Uh, we started in child care over 12 years ago as PB&J TV, um, and that really gave us the foundation and the base um, to really pivot into uh, some of these additional brands we're going to go through uh, today, and then obviously Spot TV. Um, in 2008, we launched BB&J TV. Uh, online streaming is not something you want to just pick up and run with. There's so many security, so many policies, so many parent support uh, strategies that go into it, facility support. I mean, you guys have a business to run, and you don't want to manage your online streaming. Uh, that's what, we're, what our model is here for, to kind of be a solution for you guys to continue to operate and focus on your business um, while providing mom and dad and very easy, simple, seamless connection. Uh, so in 2008, started in child care. In 2012, we partnered with the largest pet care franchise in the U.S. called Camp Bow Wow. Uh, and then in 2018, uh, and this is important, we launched uh, Spot TV uh, for child activity centers. And why I say this is important is that uh, I, I wanted to give brief kudos to both USAG and Jack Rabbit. Uh, we approached USAG back in 2018, and um, Jack Rabbit in 2019, and both became big believers of the concept early on. Um, so much so that prior to all this mess, uh, we were already producing content, online streaming, virtual viewing room scenarios uh, with USAG and, and some pre webinars. And Jack Rabbit, we already started our integration before all this even happened. And I think that speaks volumes of the brands that are on this call uh, and their forward looking mindsets of the industry as a whole. Um, just some brief inf infrastructure. Uh, Spot TV, we've been online streaming, our platform for online streaming for over 12 years now. We're in 48 U.S. states and in Canada. Uh, we'll also be uh, moving into Australia as well. Uh, we have 1,700 partner techs uh, across the U.S., and we do this for uh, installations. We do turnkey installations, but we also do ongoing service visits. Again, you know, if a camera goes down in, you know, the tumble track area or bars or, or really wherever, you know, we're already alerted and, you know, our team's, you know, taking action of shipping a new camera and we're scheduling a service technician on site and really kind of keeping it a hands-free white glove for you guys. We have 350,000 end users uh, across the, um, those, those regions that I had mentioned and we're typically ranging about 5 million plus connections a month right now. So really exciting stuff. Absolutely. And uh, just to reiterate, you know, the, the amount of areas that we cover now and partner locations that we have across this country and soon to be multiple others. I know we're in 48 states now, but I keep hinting at Bob that I'm trying to get us to that 49 and 50 mark. I have yet to, to have a call with anybody in Hawaii, but I think they're going to be maybe my last holdout of, uh, you know, getting some more, getting us all to all those states there. So uh, we're certainly working on it, but whether we're working with you guys in, in, you know, any of the 48 states now, the Canadian provinces, as Bob alluded to, the Australia uh, setup as well. We've developed three really key ways that we can get you guys set up because it's um, one of these three avenues is how we're going to begin, you know, to get you guys going with a system like this. And we've got them on the, on the screen here for you, but uh, the turnkey option is for the center that doesn't have any cameras or needs a completely new system. So if it's something you guys have that are, you know, 10 plus years old, you haven't had a chance to put cameras in the facility yet, to build a management system for you all internally, then that's something we certainly offer. Uh, it is a full service setup from cameras to wiring to installation, everything and anything you guys need to get this system uh, up and running, our team will handle to get you started. Now, if it's something you guys have as well, that's just a, 
uh, system that you put in. You've already got this set up with cameras to be able to view those areas. We'll certainly just be able to integrate with what's there. It's really simple. Generally, we're just going to send out a server to you guys, get it hooked up onto the network, and then pull all those cameras and feeds into the system, and you are rocking and rolling at that point in time. Now, we do have a really cool concept called the Spot TV Cloud setup, too. So if uh, anybody for sort of a smaller facility, we're usually around those five cameras or less, uh, then we will have a, uh, a system that we can set everything up just by pulling those cameras into a cloud server, uh, and we'll start building the stream program at that point in time. So a uh, little program for each set up based on what the gym has in place and to kind of fit what your needs are uh, based on that as well. Yeah, I just want to add on briefly to that is, you know, the integration model is fantastic. You know, we're, uh, we have 100% compatibility on here. I mean, it's very close to that. We've only ran into a couple um, uh, systems where it just really wouldn't work or that they were just way too old. I mean, you know, some, some locations might have a system in there 10 plus years. And that's something we'll work with you guys during the, um, you know, sales call, kickstart call phases is that um, if we are to integrate, you know, we want to make sure you guys are, you know, have good camera feeds coming, you know, from your facility to our cloud servers uh, so that it's presentable to mom and dad. You know, good video quality is, is key uh, when going online. So uh, that's something we'll work with you guys on, make sure, you know, everything is um, nice and, and, and presentable online for you guys when we're doing the integrations. So benefits to a camera system. Um, so at its core, Spot TV uh, is a video recording uh, enterprise solution. Um, so kind of think of us as um, kind of a security camera system going into your facility. Most businesses will have this in their model already, but they're just using it for admin use. Um, so they're using it to uh, protect their brand from false and misunderstood claims, which is most the time, the case where a child maybe misunderstood a conversation or an incident, or um, you know, maybe it's the rare case where someone actually just maybe, I don't know, made something up and it just wasn't true, or the he said, she said game happened. What's, what's really tremendous is the quality assurance you're going to have over your staff and customer interactions with the audio and video recordings coming out of Spot TV is, is huge when you're able to hear um, you know, the conversations in the lobby or at the front desk um, and go back to those uh, moments in time. I mean, the training value in there uh, is, you know, we call them teachable moments. So, you know, uh, if there was an incident on the floor um, and, and, it, and it can be looked most of the time, you know, uh, your staff will look at a camera and we see this in the child care industry all the time is um, a camera gets installed in the classroom and, and they automatically think, oh, someone's going to be watching me and have like a negative feeling towards it. But what's amazing is all the positive teaching moments that kind of come out of it. And that's going to be important for you guys as managers and owners to really leverage the Spot TV system or really any recording system that you have in your facility from a positive standpoint of, hey, I saw you do this or I saw how you interacted with this child and really reinforce it. And then what's so um, great about the Spot TV platform is that the user friendliness of cutting and clipping these um, videos, you know, an eight hour day, 10 hour day, whatever, um, you know, it's a block of video recording, but you only need two, three minutes of it. It's a simple cut and clip and export and you're creating these folders on your server desktop to actually create training moments in different uh, categories uh, per se and um, leveraging the audio and video recordings. And before I go further, just to be clear, audio and video recordings are just for admin use only. Uh, parents would only have access to live streaming. And we're gonna get into that in a little bit, but I just wanted to make sure there's a media question we typically get. Um, teachable moments too is telling versus seeing. It's very easy to, um, you know, catch something on the floor and then have a conversation about it. And, um, you know, your staff member uh, or your coach, um, you know, they get it in the conversation uh, as they're thinking back of what they did possibly wrong. But if you're able to take them to, you know, the um, uh, display in your office or, or you know, on your mobile tablet and show them back, you know, exactly what maybe where the hand placement was or, or um, the, the actual video uh, view of it, the teaching opportunity is so much better. Um, the Hawthorne effect or what's dubbed as the observer effect, which is as soon as the camera system is put inside your building, uh, you're going to immediately begin seeing an increase in productivity and performance uh, from your team. So whether you're watching or not, or mom and dad are logged in or not, the presence of a camera um, is going to cause your staff to immediately begin performing at higher levels of 
productivity just because they feel like they're being watched. And um, it, it's going to decrease your liability, decrease your risk, uh, just because of their performance is going to uptick. Um, and then again, Spot TV is acting as a security system. So a lot of the locations we work with are installing cameras in parking lots. Uh, we have license plate recognition, 24-7 uh, recording, and motion alerts to the admin app. Uh, a lot of security features that go into it that are leveraged um, as well on top of the online streaming. Uh, those are great points, and I think um, it's something, obviously, I'm going to go through some of the, the real big benefits here of the virtual viewing room. And I think one of them that kind of cross over between parents as well as the center is going to be what Bob sort of alluded to is what we call broadcast learning. And so it really allows mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, whoever is on the other side viewing uh, to reinforce what they've seen on site. And so, um, you know, most of us know at this point in time, I have a six year old and a 10 year old. If I ask my child at that end of the day, how was karate, how was gymnastics or dance, all the things that they do at this point. Um, if I get more than three words, it's, it's a win-win situation yeah. for everybody. So it was always, it was fine. Or, uh, exactly. you know, those conversations, <laughs> you're not able to go, that's not, good. You're not getting the content as much. And it's, right. it's, um, it's actually, um, sourced out of, comp, um, a Harvard study, uh, complementary learning. And really what it is, it's a reciprocating approach of, um, the learning on site at, you know, preschools and or, you know, really wherever the teaching is happening. So with mom being able to tune in, um, she's able to pick the child up now and say, hey, I got a chance to see you do your you know, tumble salts or your backhand springs or, um, you know, the, the deep dive or whatever it might be. And those conversations are so much deeper and so much more valuable. Uh, and mom, who wasn't able to maybe see uh, those, um, those events prior to, is now seeing the value of, of everything you guys are doing in the facility because sometimes it's or oftentimes it's not as um, best conveyed from the child at pickup, you know? So if they're seeing all these great things that you're doing, um, obviously that from a business standpoint, you know, the value of, of, of Spot TV and being the mediator of the great things that you guys do on site is, is, is tremendous. Very much so. Um, you know, and there has always been a huge benefit to this virtual viewing room, as Bob, you know, spoke about earlier, we've been doing this for a really long time. Um, so there's always been a benefits, you know, that really are there for not only the club owner, but the parent as well too. But, you know, some of the biggest ones we talk about are obviously, you know, that extension of your existing open door policy. So now your, your viewing room is, is no longer contained by walls. It's something that is open-ended and you're allowed at that point in time to be able to let mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, uh, anybody that would normally walk in and you would allow them to as they are a family member of that particular athlete, you know, they now can view from halfway around the world uh, at that point in time. So it, it makes this extension to be open to whatever you guys, um, you know, want those limits to be at that point. Obviously right now limiting on-site foot traffic is completely taking a new meaning. We've done this before, obviously pre-COVID, uh, as we were just trying to allow the center to not have as many people in and out. Um, and kind of manage that a little bit better. Now that's, again, something that's completely different and even more needed, but at this point, mom and dad can be in the parking lot, they can be in the coffee shop down the street, they can be you know, walking around the block, and they still can be at the office and any of those things in between. So uh, it just allows for a full open setup for your parents. Keeping kids focused and avoid coaching distractions. This is a big one for us uh, and in my mind, because again, as, as I have kids, the amount of times that I've gone to my daughter's, you know, dance or gymnastics, and they look back at me uh, every time that they finish a routine or something instead of their coach, I'm now a distraction. So I found myself at one point in time not even looking at the window anymore, trying to sit away because I wanted her to focus on the coach and not myself. Uh, so that is removing that situation because now we're being able to view and the child and the athlete is not looking at the parent um, and it's, it's focused on uh, what's going on in front of them. And that is a huge safety thing. So uh, we definitely want to include that. Um, we eliminate the need for any parent schedules. So some clubs we speak with, they have you know, parents with the last names A through M can come on this Saturday and, you know, N through Z come on this Saturday because this is the only room we have. Now you've opened it up to where everybody can view uh, all the time during their child's class. 
and you don't have to worry about setting those schedules up and making sure that they're being abided by and all the management side that goes with that. Uh, we're obviously giving them better vantage points. So a lot of viewing rooms uh, are on one side of the gym and then you know, there's stuff going on the other side they can't really see. So now you're giving mom and dad a view that they've actually never been able to see their child, you know, on the bars on that side or, you know, the uneven bars going on in the corner over here. And then the floor space ROI uh, and expensive renovations that's down there at the bottom. You know, that's kind of a big one right now, obviously. So every square foot that you guys have is, is based on uh, what can we use to have more people in the building to build more, uh, enrollment and more influx uh, of tuition coming in. And so it's funny, some of the calls we get on, we almost kind of have like this little hashtag take back uh, my viewing room uh, or hashtag take back my area because it really is at this point, you've now removed them from needing to be on site and you're able to use this area for other things if need be. Um, and then of course it, it eludes you guys from having to build out, you know, three, five, $10,000 viewing rooms uh, with glass and seats and, you know, stadium seating and all that kind of stuff to just stream out from those cameras at that point in time and create that same experience for mom and dad. One of the, um, Sam, if you don't mind me adding in, one of the big yeah. things uh, pre-COVID, um, you know, which was, you know, a safe sport concern was the, um, some gyms didn't have viewing areas um, sizable enough or adequate enough to, you know, uh, take in all the families and, and, you know, it's still very much the same. In fact, it's just a little bit more of a, of an issue just because of the limitation of parents now that you can have in the building. Uh, but the strategy is still the same, you know, uh, the ROI on putting in a, a budget friendly um, camera system that businesses need versus, you know, redoing and, and expanding, um, you know, uh, your viewing rooms on site. Um, you know, there's a, there's a track, there's a strategy there and, and it's not an elimination of either or there's a, this is a combination solution of, um, mom and dad, you know, certainly, um, can and should be able to come on site, but, you know, with limitations now and just from a business strategy going forward is reaching more families, becoming more transparent, um, engaging families on a, on a, on an entirely new level is, is really how you're on-site viewing room and your virtual viewing room should work together. So. Hey, can I move on to the next slide? Can I, we just address one really quick question? Sure. Um, we uh, Shelby, oh, go ahead. No, let, let, go ahead, let Amber go okay. ahead. <laughs> um, someone just asked what ROI st stands for. So I just wanna make sure we address that while we're talking about it. Uh, a re return on investment. So uh, really it's just about um, available floor space and then you know when you get really deep dive into the business model of floor space to um, return on your investment of each square foot in your um, on your floor um, you know and, and the space allowed and, and a number of children you can have in the space um, a lot of uh, gyms are getting really deep diving into the ROI per square foot of their building so I just wanted to add real quick that when we're talking about um, how we engage the parents, you know, many parents today have been, have been raising their children in a system where they have been given access to the kids online, whether it was through the daycare or through the elementary schools or summer camp programs. So right. it's actually fairly a common practice for quite a few parents out there. But I wanted to add that when you clear out your waiting room with parents who go online, so let's say you encouraged your teen parents who, the teen parents are, th those kids are there 16, 20, 24 hours a week. And I know as a teen parent, I don't wanna be there 24 hours a week. And, but I do wanna be there about one hour a week. And I just wanna see how he's doing. I don't wanna in, 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 uh, insert myself. I just wanna see how he's doing. So I kinda of know what to prepare for when the meet is coming up. You know, like, am I going to, do I have to give the big speech on you did great, but, or are we prepared to win? And so that's kind of like some of the stuff that I wanna see. I wanna see how some of the skills that he's been struggling with. And right. so I can, so if I have that option as a team parent, I can go home and just watch. The coach can say, hey, this will be the practice you wanna watch. He's going to do the routines or he's going to do the skill and then you can get an idea. Um, but the other side of it is while well, you've got some parents sitting out at their homes or in their cars, it allows for other parents with the smaller children, you know, your four, five, six year olds who are in the rec classes, the children with disabilities, children who have problems where you want the parent in the building. 
you want, there are many opportunities, there are many times when a parent is necessary. And um, especially with the smaller children, as the older children go along, obviously the parents, you know, I remember when my kid was in karate, I never walked. But after about two years, and when he turned about the age of seven, I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm going to go across the street and do some grocery shopping and come and pick you back up. So um, I, I just want to keep in mind that we still want children, we still want parents in the waiting rooms. Um, but the idea of virtual viewing is giving the parents those options and then clearing out your, your waiting room for the parents that truly need to be there. So, right. um, so I, I'm ready to go on now. Well, I just, um, I just wanted to, um, I guess, reiterate because I think it was fantastic that you brought up both those, which is the combination of your on-site viewing room and your virtual viewing room, really working together as, a, as an on-site facility strategy. And then uh, you hit the nail on the head, and we're going to go right into securities right now, because I know that's a big uh, question about online streaming security, specifically related to Spot TV. But, um, and I mentioned this before in, in the beginning you know, of the webinar, is that while this is new to this industry, your families, or a lot of them, are very um, sensitized already to online streaming coming out of preschool and childcare. Again, we've been there for 10 plus years uh, doing it fast. So, um, very, very, very similar industries. So, robust security, Dream Shield. Um, so, 12 years of streaming experience, that's huge. I can't say that enough. Um, Stream Shield technology. Now, this is something we're super excited about. It is actually patent pending technology as of uh, last year. And what that is, is in our iOS and Android apps, while mom and dad are viewing in Spot TV apps, uh, if they were to try and take a screenshot or a screen capture, our app is actually listening to the operating software um, on, of the phone, whether it be iOS or Android, and is detecting the attempt of the screenshot and is detecting the attempt of the screen capture and is throwing the overlay of, um, you know, we've detected an active screen recording session and they'll have to actually disable the, uh, go back to the settings, disable the um, the recording, and then go back into, and then they can uh, begin viewing again. On the screenshot side, uh, we're actually uh, can place the account on hold immediately, uh, and you know we'll uh, have a reapproval process with the parent. Uh, but as soon as, and when we launched this um, last year, it was amazing to see the appreciation from parents. Well, we knew the owners and uh, our customers. Would, would love this feature. But from the parent perspective, uh, Sam, you know, he works directly with our customer experience team. Um, the feedback of, wow, this is tremendous. Once they, you know, understood the reasons why, which was privacy concerns. And, um, you know, while 99 out of 100 times, mom's just trying to take a quick screenshot, send it over to dad and, you know, say something nice. Hey, look at little Johnny or what, what have you. Uh, it's that one time that we were concerned about that, why we developed this uh, and have patent pending technology around it. Um, our platform is built on Microsoft.net engineering. Uh, our app is, has in-app facial recognition. Uh, we're streaming at 256 SSL encrypted streaming, which uh, is meeting or exceeding uh, online banking standards. Uh, we have a, a server redundancy infrastructure, and I think this is huge because um, the term hack comes up and, you know, once every five to seven discovery calls. And, and, and we understand it's a concern because it is new uh, in this industry. But coming again, 12 years of streaming experience in the childcare industry, um, you know, to say this properly is um, nothing is hack proof, but we can do everything we can on the front side to be, um, meeting the needs and uh, having all the security levels up front where it's very, 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 very difficult. However, if FBI building, if Capital One, if Home Depot, if those breaches can occur, really what the strategy is for companies like us and proactive um, solutions like ourselves is the redundancies and fail. So if ever there was an instance where Spot TV would ever become compromised, we can immediately redirect through our cloud server network. Uh, at any given time, Spot TV is running four duplicate um, cloud servers. So if there was ever to be one that's compromised on the East Coast, we can redirect to a, um, through a Dyn solution and we're just pointing to a duplicate Spot TV uh, database and platform uh, in another region uh, immediately and user really wouldn't even notice the, the switch. Um, and then we're isolating and addressing um, the uh, compromised server. So, well, yes, we do everything we can on the front side, 
for securities, SSL encrypted streaming, um, you know, website solutions, all that great stuff. It is really behind the scenes what we're doing on a redundancy redirect failover strategy uh, that really puts us in the forefront of securities and what we're doing on top of features such as stream shield and uh, Sam's going to go into the dashboard side of things where, you know, there's timeout features on the viewing and um, session viewing and um, class management settings, all that great stuff. So, um, oh, and stream shield technology. I don't know why I have that on here twice, but super uh, excited. It's about just it. super important. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yes. Uh, so as Bob alluded to, there's a lot of things that we can, you know, we're doing already on our end and the back end. And then we got, you know, you guys are part of that front end security setup as well too. So to kind of give you a, a good idea of how it, it all works basically. Right. So we kind of talked about the installation side of it. So once we figured out that path for you guys, uh, whether that's new integration, uh, the whole nine yards, we get that set up. And part of that setup is to get you guys a marketing kit. And so we want to make sure that we're able to give you guys the information needed at hand to really promote the program, get mom and dad excited about it, use it as your marketing to let them know that you've now bringing this in as a, a way for them to, to be able to see, to be able to be a part of everything. Um, and it's just going to be a great way because what's going to happen. And I think, um, you know, everybody that I speak with, and, I, and again, I get the pleasure to, to really talk with probably 10 to 15 owners a day of what's going on and, and how we can, you know, best help them out is you're going to have your diehards and your team kids are coming back. You're going to have some of those parents that are just not ready um, emotionally yet uh, based on what's going on. And then you're going to have the majority of people that are on the fence. And when you use something like this to show them along with all the other steps, I'm sure that you guys are already doing in your center, this is going to push those people that are on the fence to come back, you know, weeks sooner than what they would have normally. And so we want to give you that material. So you'll have marketing brochures, you'll have social media uh, images and content uh, sample, posts, all that kind of stuff to really promote the program. And then uh, once that's set up, your parents are going to register for a Spot TV account. They're going to go to the website, they're going to go to the app, and they're going to register for your gym. They're going to pick their class that they want to register for. And the way that operates is that once they hit submit, it's actually going to send it to your team uh, in an email and let you know that that parent is registered. And it's really just as simple as, as an approve or deny button in the email. But this gives you guys the security level in the front end to make sure that they should have access to an account. So you'll get their information and then you'll always be able to change it and update it as well. But this is kind of the front setup. So nobody's getting access to these cameras for these times unless you guys approve it and you know who they are at that point in time. Part of the administrative side of it is you guys are going to have, and we kind of talked about this a little bit, but this complete uh, recording software for management. So you guys will have access to your cameras 24 seven, whether that's via the PBJ um, and Spot TV admin app and then you'll have a link that you can put in and view your cameras all the time as well too um, so you'll never not have access to see what's going on in your facility uh, or the recordings to go back and review so you'll be able to look at everything trim your recordings make those videos that bob talked about uh 24 7 whether you're on site at home um you know across the country probably most of us are, are, are going to be looking for a much needed vacation once we get back set up and uh we get this off our shoulders but all those places you guys will be able to have this set up for you now, once this program is launched and, and mom and dad are in and they're approved, you're going to have this really cool admin dashboard that we have set up right here for you guys. And it's, it's got a lot of uh, fun things to it, but a lot of security features as well, too. So you'll be able to set up these complete viewing schedules based on whatever that class schedule is at the gym. Uh, you'll be able to designate viewing areas. So uh, if this is the preschool or beginner tumblers class, you're going to be able to designate that mom needs access to these three cameras. And that can be as many cameras or as few cameras as you guys want but you'll be able to set up this just all encompassed, you know, viewing area for them that they can now scroll back and forth in between those cameras based on, you know, where they've rotated in during that class schedule. And then we also have viewing sessions. So we can actually limit the amount of time mom and dad can log in as well as the amount of logins that they have per day. So obviously with most setups, it's going to be something where you want them to have enough access to be able to view the majority of that hour or 45 minutes, especially for those preschool uh, and young ones, but it's something that we can totally limit those sessions. It's also got an automatic timeout feature of a maximum of 25 minutes. And what that does is that makes sure that, that no matter who, um, which parent is logged in and where they're viewing, it's going to time out automatically. So they're never going to be able to 
log in and it's just going to stay up. And even if they walk away, it'll still be going. It's going to automatically time out for them at that point. Sam, if you don't mind me just jumping in there real quick is, um, Come on in. Yeah, we're we're in, in top of we mentioned twenty five minutes, but we we have the um, hour class and the two hour class um, timeout in there as well. And really, what that's designed to if mom was at Starbucks and she happened to get up from her uh, laptop or you know left her mobile device open, that you can rest assured that the video feed would be timed out, similar to an online banking session. No, thank you. I, that's right. We I do apologize. We we have made that update for everything. So. Back to this part, but um, you know, mom and dad are going to be able to download that app like we talked about. It's both iOS and Android. It's going to be a free app. It's really simple. Uh, as they log in with that username and password the first time, it actually helps them create a four-digit PIN. And so that four-digit PIN allows them to log in really quickly from then on with that code for that device. And I think this was in the other slide. It also has the facial recognition software. So we always make the joke if anybody has that phone and they want to kind of stare blankly into the phone for a couple of seconds, uh, it will... Uh, log them in at that point in time and they don't have to press anything so uh, really convenient very user friendly um, and it's it's something that mom and dad can get in and out within seconds and uh, automatically start viewing part of the admin side of it and you can see here in the center of this screen is basically that is the list of active parents or that they have at this center and there's a lot of options here but some of the big ones that you're going to use is uh, you'll be able to set those login parameters for each parent so uh, how many times you want them for those kind of links, whether it's an hour or two hour, 45 minutes, uh, like we just talked about, you'll be able to put the account on hold at any point in time. And where this comes into play a lot of times is uh, you may have somebody that's leaving for two weeks or three weeks or a session and coming back for the next one. You can certainly just put the account on hold. Uh, they won't be able to log in. When they come back, you just take it off hold. It just stops them from having to re-register at that point in time. A fun term they use a lot of times is why we'll a lot of centers put mom and dad um, in time out, you know, if you need to use this to grab their attention, uh, if you need to, um, you know, speak with mom and dad, maybe they're late on tuition. This is a great way to grab their attention uh, and they'll certainly reach right out really quickly uh, when they're not able to log into their spot TV account. So uh, definitely user, uh, something for you guys to use on your end on that side. And then we kind of have a complete history of it for you. So you will be able to see every account, how often they've logged in, what times, uh, how many uh, times within a day, uh, you'll get a whole list that you can look up of each account uh, that you can track, who's using the system, how often, uh, the whole nine yards. And at the top right-hand corner there, you can kind of see it says my top users. So you'll actually be able to see who your top five parents are that are logging in uh, to the center. Again, uh, we usually have a little bit of a joke there that you guys probably already know who your top five users are going to be uh, based on your parents because you know them well. Uh, but this will give you guys some, some visual confirmation of who they are for sure. And then obviously part of this whole program is to have a complete support center for you guys. So um, it's, it's support on the side for the management team. So as you guys are uh, needing help with cameras or recordings, uh, video clips, the whole nine yards, you're going to be able to reach out to our support team. That'll be able to help you guys do that at any point in time. And then the same thing with your parents as well. Uh, I think we kind of alluded to this earlier. You guys have a business to run uh, as they need help with registering uh, their username and password, their caps lock is on when they're logging in, everything that goes into it, they're going to reach out to our support team. And there's really no way they can't get to us. Uh, sometimes I have a trouble listing all of them because there's so many, but it's, I mean, we have phone support, email support, social media platforms across the board that they can get to us from. Uh, if they're in the, the app or the website, there's a support button that they can click and hit an FAQ page submit a viewing request, and even submit uh, just a support ticket straight to our team while they're in there trying to view, and we'll turn around and be able to hit them right back and help them out. Beautiful. So I'm gonna briefly go over this, and this is just a provider checklist, and yes, it does focus on some of the Spot TV features. Um, Amber and Jack Rabbit are gonna be sending this out after this webinar. Um, we encourage this solution on an industry level. Um, Spot TV would love to be your provider. However, this really just gives you guys um, just some good content of what to be looking for, um, what makes sense for you, and what meets your business needs. So I'm gonna um, briefly try and pull this up here. So you're probably kind of already um, gotten the notion that Spot TV is so much more than just live streaming. You know, I know there's like the, the, the Zoom concept or the um, Google meetings or, you know, there's a couple other new industry participants, but really those are just live 
streaming solutions, you know, even with Zoom, I've heard a couple on the forums and, and Facebook feeds of just setting up reoccurring Zoom meetings with links. And, and that's really just not the best secure way to be offering, um, you know, a live streaming program, uh, is emailing links out. Um, to start, we do HD streaming as a standard at five it's less than any industry participant. We have Stream Shield, which we kind of talked about earlier. Some of the couple of big questions we've uh, seen on, on forums or on uh, Facebook groups is, what is the streaming difference? Um, so many other solutions will directly use your local bandwidth on site or rescan a costly uh, third party solution like Wilds of Media or AWS. Uh, and these require constant camera connections um, and they're very costly um, to the provider and to uh, the end user, you guys. Uh, Spot TV is actually a proprietary on-demand cloud relay solution which utilizes uh, the cloud and real-time viewing factors to deliver optimal streaming while min minimizing local bandwidth. I know that was a mouthful, but um, we are essentially streaming from the server on site to our cloud server uh, off-site and mom and dad are actually tapping the cloud server off-site not your server on site and eating up your local bandwidth uh, to summarize. And all that's done with encrypted streaming techniques. Um, does Spot TV require a contract? Yes and no. If we're not uh, supplying any equipment, no. If we do, uh, we typically have a 12 month agreement. And really, that is uh, because we have unprecedented industry warranties. If forever a camera was to go down, a piece of equipment goes down. Um, you know, our infrastructure uh, is typically already alerted, already knows about the camera down, already knows about the server issue, troubleshooting with you over the phone. Uh, if, you know, if it's not coming back online, we're shipping a camera same day, next day, uh, and then we'll have a tech on site you know, within, you know, 72 hours max at no additional cost to you. And it's really built on into the warranties or extended warranties, you know, in the program and completely optional for you. Um, you know, and, and this white glove experience is not offered in any uh, shape or form in, in the industry. Um, and here in, is a, a really good checklist for you guys to use while you know you do your searches. Because uh, again, while we'd love to be a provider of yours, we know and we want you to do your homework and you know see what's best fit for you guys and your model. Hey Bob, um, twelve years. Yeah. Sorry to stop you. Is it supposed to be on the screen right now? Yeah, you, you can't checklist? see it. No, I don't think it's come up. I think we're just still looking at the same one. I want to make sure everybody can see what we're we're going over. Shelby, can you see my screen? Oh, you're muted. We can see your screen, but I just see the PowerPoint slide. Uh, so it's not showing me. I don't know why the PDF um, isn't coming through here. It's on my screen, though. Um, how could I do this? Exit uh, presenter mode real quick and try that. Um, All the fun that okay. goes into a live Zoom conference. Okay, let right. me try this. How there we now? go. <laughs> there it is. All, All right. right. Sorry, everybody. Now, I'm not going to go back through this whole thing. Just <laughs> <skim it. laughs> uh, so, so much more than live streaming, where uh, HD is our standard, 5x less the price. Uh, we have Stream Shield. We talked about that. I briefly talked about you know streaming differences and, and, and agreements. Um, and then here's the provider checklist. So I guess what I was getting at is, while well, Spot TV would love to be a provider uh, or an option for you, we know that uh, there's other options out there, and uh, I want you guys to do your homework and compare and, and see what fits your needs best. Um, we've talked about this before: 12 years of experience for a fixed monthly rate. So you know we don't we're not variable based on number of kids in your building. Uh, we provide marketing kits. We have all the terms of use documentation that you want to insert into uh, your video release forms. We can sync to your cloud storage. So when we talk about creating those teachable moments, um, you know, with your staff and, and, and um, you know, really nice to drag and drop those exported clips right to your Dropbox or Box accounts. Uh, enterprise cloud streaming, HD video is, is not an upgrade. Um, we have Stream Shield, Session Timer. Sam went through a lot of this stuff. Uh, license plate recognition technology, if you're interested in that. These are audit history. Um, System setups, you know, can be turnkey or you can self set up. Um, we'll, we'll supply installer guides to you guys if you want to save a few bucks and run wiring or just integrate uh, yourself if we just ship it out a server. And then unprecedented support and warranties that back this program. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. I really just wanted to give you guys, uh, and, and Amber's going to send this out after this webinar. And this is really just something good for you guys to use as you're looking around for virtual viewing room options to compare out there. Um, 
you know, in the industry. So, all right, so let me go ahead back to the PowerPoint here and new share. Okay, we back. Yep. Right, cool. And okay, so let's chat integration. Um, so like I had mentioned, this was pre COVID uh, Jack rabbit and Scott TV uh, really got together and thought this was uh, something that combined, um, you know, it was a partnership and an integration for the future of an industry. Uh, phase one in December 2019, our goal was parent engagement, better parent engagement. So what we did was we um, integrated our Spot TV uh, parent viewing portal into the Jackrabbit class parent portal. Um, and why that's really exciting is because why mom and dad are in Jackrabbit's parent portal, um, registering for classes, paying tuition, what have you, is that they're also now able to tune into that specific class. Um, there are several more phases to come with the Jackrabbit integration that our team and, and Jackrabbit are super excited about. Um, this was a phase one integration that was pre-COVID, and now that um, you know we're both uh, up against you know a number, a tremendous number of locations that are you know signing up now and are really interested in this integration and partnership and, and offering a live streaming solution. We are learning so much, you know, from from the new customers, and, and, and really is building our integration roadmap going forward with with Jackrabbit. Now, um, Spot TV is still an independent uh, provider and can be used outside of Jackrabbit, but Jackrabbit is um, the class management solution that really you know stepped forward and, and wanted to deliver this in their platform as well. So if you do have Jackrabbit, you can integrate your Spot TV. Um, if you just don't have a class management portal or, or really anything. Uh, one, check with Jackrabbit because they're great, but you know you can use Spot TV separately uh, as well. Um, and then advantages to integrations, and I really wanted to uh, harp on this too, is that Jackrabbit gets to be the best and focus on what they do, and Spot TV gets to be the best and focus on what we do, and then those things get to work together. Um, you know, when providers start trying to do both or um, you know uh, it's new or, or something like that, it, it's a lot of things to juggle and, um, you know, it's really a best of both worlds where we're both able to run our own lanes and um, create roadmaps in our own lanes and focus on what we're doing yet have them work together uh, in a very seamless manner. Beautifully put. Could, certainly agree with you guys. So, um, at this point, it's really, you know, wanted to give you guys kind of an insight on not only what general pricing would be but based on those options so we kind of talked about them earlier there's you know those three setups that we we can look into based on the needs of the gym at that point point. and so option one talks about what we want to do if we can first out of the gate we're looking to integrate with what you guys have um as you know we talked about we're basically 100 percent compatible it's a very rarity that we find anything that we can't uh, find a way to get into the system but what we're doing, that general startup cost is anywhere from, you know, zero to a thousand dollars at most. And right now uh, we're doing a free integration uh, through the end of May. I think we got that at the bottom there, but that allows us to just uh, send out that free server to you guys, get you hooked up and uh, completely integrate in a squared away at really no cost to the gym to get started at that point. Uh, the only thing that sometimes comes into play is uh, a technician fee to get on site to do the initial hookup and uh, help with those initial configurations. But um, it's something we certainly work with the gym if, uh, or center that if, if they can do it on site themselves or have an IT guy or those kind of things, we will certainly work together and uh, we can go that route as well. Uh, generally, we're looking at somewhere around a $145 to $185 a month for uh, the monthly subscription. So that covers all your streaming, that covers all the programs we talked about, and that complete support system for you guys as, as well as mom and dad. So everything's kind of encompassed into that price point. Option two we've got right here is the cloud setup we talked about. We're sticking to that one to five cameras generally. Um, you know, usually set up with installation cameras, the whole nine yards. We're looking at somewhere between that 500 to 2000 mark. Again, that ranges a little bit based on camera count and your area. Uh, of the country just geographically based on install prices and those things. And again, we're, you know, with the subscription, uh, we're looking at that 135 to 185. 
and all these pricing, you know, as it says below, we're talking about, we want to make sure we take care of not only our, you know, our Jackrabbit clients, but USAG uh, as well. And we'll get that 10% off of those subscriptions and equipment uh, for you guys. But option three is kind of that full install. So as you guys, you know, need those cameras, you need four to, you know, six, seven, eight cameras to cover the gym. You need one for the lobby, two in the parking lot. Uh, all those kind of things to give you guys a complete system uh, can range, you know, generally between three and five. Uh, again, that cost varies just a little bit on camera count. And then we are in that range of 175 to 285 a month. Now, all these rates are flat rate subscription fees. So you guys can, you know, start off with two or 300 users and grow to 2000 users. That price point is never going to change once we lock it in on the contract with you guys uh, based on your system size and setup. Another, another thing too I want to add in is um, while we did our best to present you guys with you know some general pricing here, uh, really what comes into play is number of cameras that you guys need, um, number of families in your building, uh, market installation rates. So obviously like a um, installation and wiring project in New Jersey is going to be different than an installation and wiring project in Alabama just based on wiring uh, or labor rates, you know. So um, you know, these are general pricing, but kind of gives you a good idea that um, this can be you know, a budget friendly opportunity for you guys. And even, you know, with the Jackrabbit and USA uh, discounts, uh, free integration through May, and then we're even on some of the new projects we're offering the uh, six months um, 0% financing um, as well to kind of get this project in motion for you guys. We're trying to do this as budget friendly as we can and not take advantage of what's going on right now. Um, these are the, and that's something, you know, Sam and I were talking about the other day, we're super proud that we've been able to, with all the demand that's going on is, you know, these are the same numbers we presented into in, in webinars um, six months ago and three months ago with USAG. Uh, we really just copied the slide over and it's, we're just all in on the industry and making sure everyone's kind of taken care of as best we can, meeting the demands. Uh, another big thing too, I wanted to bring in here, Sam, is the timelines. Um, sure. Everyone asks, when can we get this set up? I needed it two days ago or yesterday kind of thing. And, you know, from top down at Spot TV, I just wanted to tell you guys, uh, we are doing everything we can to meet uh, the growing demand of, of, you know, the online streaming solution that we're, we're providing. Um, we typically, pre-COVID, we're about a 30-day onboarding process for new installations. Uh, that is typically less if we're just integrating into an existing solution or you have your own installer or, you know, it's not a full wiring project um so 30 days is kind of like an expectation i would i would try and set with you guys but you know i, I guess i am um wanted to express our our urgency for everybody and also kind of convey that we are working as quickly as we can with everybody uh and trying to answer emails i mean sam's on 20 calls a day at this point um and um just trying to make sure everyone's being taken care of as soon as we can. You know, Sam just got a phone with a, um, a client this morning. While yes, they wanted wanted us to install this weekend, and their first call was today. Obviously, that can't happen. But what we are doing with them is we're getting them signed up. We're sending them down all their marketing material and getting um, and then they're getting that information over to their families as part of their as part of their opening strategy. So if we're three weeks from now from installing or thirty days or you know maybe we pull it off and do it sooner just based on you know, their setup, is that they have the marketing material on hand and they're communicating to their families that you know, this is coming and this is gonna be something part of our, um, you know, our model going forward. Um, so that kind of gives us, us both the buffer of, 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 with the marketing materials and, and letting them know what's coming. Absolutely, and that's something that Bob and I are really meeting with the onboarding team almost on a daily basis at this point, trying to come up with um, you know, who's next, who can we get done uh, immediately right now, what's going on in their state versus compared yeah. to somebody else's state that might not be open just yet. Uh, so we're taking everything and anything that goes into those accounts and just trying to build that, uh, that pipeline as quick as we can for you guys. Yeah. So just, we are, I mean, we're expressing our urgency, but also asking for a little patience and working with us too, uh, obviously through all this as well. So, um, with that, all right. So I had to get myself off mute. So <laughs> I have back. a last slide. Um, with this because there are, we know that there are a lot of clubs out there who either don't have the resources or they're not quite ready to go this route and um there's a simple reality to a lot of this like i said earlier i i understand 
that um, each state is different and what the requirements are of families of guests inside your gym or inside your waiting area of your gym. But there's also a side of the safe sport policy, which is the question that we get quite a bit of, how am I supposed to be COVID compliant while at the same time being safe sport compliant? So I'm gonna go back to the first thing, give me a call and let us discuss it because um, there are solutions for everything. And we, uh, and we realize that. And if we have, if we have a, um, if you, if, if we're working together, we have a direction that you're headed in, we, we can kind of help you help guide that direction a little bit. So with that being said, some of the interim strategies that we are hearing from clubs um, is like I said, let the families know your concerns. Like we really want to hold it. We really are only allowed X amount of people in our waiting area, let's say 10, when you're usually can get 30 or 40. Um, so we're going to create a schedule let the parents help you create that schedule. So when everybody's working together, so I don't know, um, rec parents have first viewing, you know, and then they will switch off with team parents once a week. Um, I, the parents we are hearing from actually absolutely want to work with the clubs. They want to find solutions. So first of all, look for those solutions with your parents, create the parent task force, put your parents to work. Um, I have been around youth activities my entire career. I am a parent and I'm telling you, there's always those moms and dads who are like, put me to work, I wanna help. So, you know, some of the things we're hearing from is keeping a parent at the front door and monitoring how many people are inside. Um, we are hearing that there are parents who are um, checking the temperatures. If they're like, one is a nurse and so they reached out to the families. We know that um, uh, there are, clubs that are limiting to one parent per child, no siblings. You have to reach out to them though and you have to talk to them about that because some parents have small children and they can't leave the small children at home while they drop off one child here and then one child there and then at some point you're gonna have small children. So there has to be a discussion about how you're gonna manage that. Um, encourage parents of older children or children of the team to let parents with younger children or children with special needs have access before them. And I think most teen parents would be willing to do that. Uh, but here's the thing, there is this aspect of the policy that parents have the right to access to practice. Now, we also know that we're in the middle of COVID. So what do you do? How do you make that work? Well, it goes back to each club has an individual um, responsibility to work with their parents on this. And I can't stress that enough because if you go about it alone and you don't talk to the parents about what your issues are, then they are gonna, they're going to start pushing back. Um, there, are, there are situations where clubs cannot have anybody in the lobby. So you might want to consider having one parent be the, um, I don't know, team safe sport liaison. So that would be a great way to get that and, and ask them, they can get background checked, they can take the safe sport course, they can become an instructor member at USA Gymnastics, that costs $20. And then they have, they can have access to your floor at that point. And then they could be the person that is, that is watching and making sure everything's going well and um, working with the other family saying, hey, you know, I'm gonna be watching your kid. The governor won't let us have families in the gym. So I'm gonna be the liaison. I'm gonna be your safe sport liaison. And then announce that person. You know, or you can have 10 safe sport liaisons and those parents can and switch off. You can have a safe sport liaison um, for every type of group you have. There can be the level six girls safe sport liaison. There could be the girls liaison. There could be the boys liaison. There could be um, the daycare liaison, things along those lines. So I think that there are options. We just have to figure out the best way to get those options to work. Um, and like I said um, before, it is so crucial that, that the families do have access because it's transparency on everybody's part. And when, and when there is transparency, the questions go away. What happened? I don't know what happened because I wasn't able to see. Well, when you have that transparency and it's been open and that communication has been open, then those questions seem to start disappearing. Um, one of the things that I do want to continue to mention is that, um, that the Safe Sport office at USA Gymnastics, we are here for you guys. And we are not here to overrule the governor of any state or the health department because there are so many restrictions right now. 
that is coming at you guys from all places. And we desperately understand that. We know that there's a lot of fear out there from the parents, from the clubs, from the coaches. Should we make them wear masks? Should we not make them wear masks? So continue to ask these questions, continue to talk to each other, talk to the families, talk to the athletes. You know, it's another one that we, we often forget to talk to the children. We forget to tell them that your coach, if this is something that you're gonna do, your coach is gonna be in a mask and that's okay. It doesn't mean he's sick. It just means that's what we're trying to do to keep you safe. So it's important to talk to the children as well and make sure that they are aware, you know, the, uh, we're gonna encourage you to wash your hands more often than you normally would. We're going to ask your mom to sit in the car because we can't let her be in here because um, we can only have 10 people versus 30. But, but she is gonna be aware of what you're doing. We're gonna to talk to her afterwards. So there's a lot of options to take the fears. And I just wanna encourage you to, to be creative with those options. And like I said, if you um, feel like her, her back is up against the wall, to reach out to me and we can, we can find some solutions for you. And that's my big cheerleading speech. <laughs> Perfect. Beautifully, beautifully done. All right, so we have quite a few questions and I know we're over the hour, but we've still got a lot of people on the line. So for anybody that wants to hang out um, and listen to the Q&A, we are here to answer those questions. I just want to remind everybody that a copy of the recording will be sent out tomorrow. Um, and we will also include that provider checklist that um, Bobby and Sam put together. Um, so you can access that yourself. And if you have any questions, um, the email will come from me. So you can shoot me an email back and I can guide you to the right person. Um, I think it's safe to say that we are all here to help. Um, and if we don't have the answer, we can help guide you to the right resources. So some of these are gonna kind of be a little sporadic in um, what the content was, or when the content was covered. And I'll try to get rid of some of the duplicate questions as we go. Uh, first question is, how easy is it to turn off an individual camera if let's say the dancers are changing costumes? Sam, you got that? Uh, yeah, so it's something that um, it can be due in really multiple ways. It's something that can easily be done from um, either the uh, server or app on site, but it also can be a quick email or call to our center and we can certainly turn it off immediately at that point in time uh, so that we're removing that stream uh, or uh, camera. I do think too, adding into this is operationally, um, while a lot of things are gonna be changing on site uh, through this anyways, that's something you guys do have an online streaming program it is, you know, it, you gotta be mindful on your operational strategies of where kids are now changing, um, where cameras are positioned. So when we go through our system design phase, um, you know, we're strategically positioning cameras so that, um, you know, they're only catching, you know, the floor and activity areas that we're not aiming towards, you know, bathroom entry doors or really anything to that nature, um, you know, in, in, in where, you know, children should be changing essentially. So um, camera placement plays a lot into that and, um, you know, we're really only focusing on, you know, the floor area. Great. This one, I believe, is going to be for Shelba. Um, how do the Safe Sport guidelines for student and teacher interactions affect private lessons now that we are online? It's the same thing that it was. So, um, one of them one has to go through a, a process where there has to be waivers, there has to be, uh, the parents have to have access um, to that one-on-one. -on -one. So, and then there has to be another coach involved. So basically it's not something that would normally be happening in the gym per policy. So it shouldn't be, and it should, it should not be happening online. Um, and I, I need to be pretty clear about that. So, but if there is gonna be a one-on-one, -on -one, the parents need to know about it, the club owner needs to know about it, there needs to be waivers involved. There needs to be um, uh, a schedule. So it's one hour. Um, if there's something that's been announced where four kids we're supposed to participate and only, um, and only one showed up, which has actually happened with my son's school where they had this offer of um, the science teacher's gonna be on Zoom at four o'clock, be on. So my son was the only person that showed up and he said, I need, to get, I need you to go get your mom. You know, so there are certain things. Another thing is recording them and making sure that the parents have the recording 
um, making sure the club owner has it. There's a lot of options, but I would, I would recommend staying away from that one personally. Okay. Great tips there. Um, next one, is Spot TV compatible with our current Ring cameras? Um, so Ring, like a Nest solution, um, they're very app specific. They're called um, PMP or plug and play solutions. And typically, and we do this through our network review process to give you the full verification, but um, typically like a Ring or a Nest are very isolated to their own specific app and do not provide us with the necessary RTSP feeds to pull from, but we can confirm that uh, following like a discovery call and kind of getting the model numbers and all that stuff uh, with, um, you know, your existing system. And um, if for some reason it's not, I mean, we'll certainly let you know, uh, but you know, our team here will do our best attempt to try and tap whatever ring can give us in terms of an RTSPP. Awesome. What is the process of setting up the Spot TV cloud system and what is the key difference between setting it up through the cloud versus integrating with our current cameras we have for? I would say uh, first off is going to be the camera count. Obviously uh, with the cloud system, we want to stick between one and five cameras just because the, uh, it gives you guys the, uh, the server comes into play with more because it's then going to give you the power that you need on site as well as recording space uh, to get more out of it at that point in time. Um, with the cloud system, it's really unique because we can just pull the IP addresses of the cameras um, from the system there to the uh, cloud setup at that point in time and then we're streaming from there. Whereas the server gets hooked up on site, we pull everything into there at that point in time and then push everything out to the cloud streaming setup uh, as Bob alluded to earlier. And so the cloud's uh, certainly more budget friendly because we're not even to sell like yes. a server on site and some other components, but you know, the downfall of maybe not having a server on site is you know, where we can record 30 days to six months on site with the server. Our cloud solution is really only given about 72 hours of recording, but still plenty enough time we're finding uh, because if there's an incident in a facility, um, you're able to, you'll know about it right away and you're able to right click and uh, indefinitely uh, export it out and save it, you know, locally kind of thing. So, um, you know, it really is just going to be dependent on the uh, upon the model. You know, we are also seeing some uh, locations doing cloud first and then looking to add a server in about 30 days, just, you know, from a cost standpoint, um, getting a server on site uh, versus not having one, you know, from a budget strategy. All right. A uh, couple questions about this topic. So what bandwidth upload download speeds are required to run with Spot TV? So I love this question because it's, it's very minimal. Um, generally on site, you guys are gonna have an upload speed and a download speed. And download speed is what the center is going to be using majority of the time. So as they're you know, going to websites and doing the things that they do on the computers there, they're using the download speed side of it. Uh, Spot TV is going to focus on the upload side. So uh, generally you're going to have a standard base internet of kind of like a 10-2 line where it's uh, 10 download and 2 upload. And uh, we will stick somewhere around the, a 2 upload minimum um, to be able to give you guys a really good uh, streaming program at that point in time. But generally that's kind of a, a base setup. At that point. Right. And, and to add on to that, the 2 megabit upload um, speed is really for both of us combined. It's not like we require full two megs. It's Absolutely. we're just leaving enough room for us, and then you know plenty of room for you guys to still operate your business on the on the on the local network there. And really, what's exciting about Spot TVs and the way we stream versus everybody else on the market is everyone else needs a constant connection to the camera, whereas uh, we're only getting one camera connection to our cloud server uh, at the time it's requested. Uh, and then when it's re-requested by another parent on the same view, they're tapping the same feed from our cloud service. So we're really minimizing um, the local internet needed. Um, your standard business class line, which most facilities will have, is going to be plenty for us. And we kind of verify that with you guys in the network review process anyway. Uh, so. Awesome. Um, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to let the experts answer just in <laughs> case it benefits a few people. Um, is there audio in the live stream? Uh, no. So June, what's that? Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say no. <laughs> so while we, um, we are, if we're doing an integration, so just to make that clear too, uh, we're limited to that camera that's there. So if that camera there doesn't have audio, we can't add it anyway. But if we're installing cameras, our cameras are certainly audio enabled and it's something that the audio is generally reserved for administrative use only at that point in time. 
but if requested, um, yes. which have been a case here and there, and we're streaming audio. So it's certainly doable, and, it, and audio comes into play a little bit on the um, room that the camera's placed in. So when you're installing a camera in a big gym area in the back, and you know their kids are out on the floor, and it's 30 feet away, you got to be mindful of like, what background noise you're going to catch and then actually what audio you're trying to get. Um, typically we're seeing audio leverage for admin use in the lobby and different areas uh, throughout the building. Whereas, um, you know, we see it in dance studios or swim schools more uh, so than, you know, the back uh, gym area uh, just because of the space from the camera to uh, the actual location uh, of the kids. Okay. And I'm going to punt this one to Shelba. Um, if COVID-19 crowd orders restrict live parent observation and if a family does not want to use live stream for whatever reason how do we comply with COVID-19 orders and safe sport policy for this group that is disenfranchised to the binary system being presented today? I knew that was question was coming <laughs> um, and I got to be honest with you we it's a struggle and um, if 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 I get this right I'm going to try to um, answer this the best way I can. So COVID, COVID, we cannot overreach into the government. At the same time, there has to be transparency in the gym. And so this is why um, I recommended that there be some sort of system where even if the most you can do is have one parent on that team who gets, uh, who becomes an instructor member or who just becomes background checked, and takes the safe sport course and they become a liaison until this this restriction is lifted because it will eventually be lifted you know there's there's not going to come a point in time where no parents are ever allowed back into a gym i mean i have to believe that so sure. i think we're talking, i think we're talking about a few months here at most so if they're not willing if the gym it doesn't have the resources to go to do the online service and then the parents desperately want to be a part of it i think there needs to be one of two conversations um, one with the parents saying, this is just simply the rules. And I can't have you in here because the government won't let me in here. Um, we have we have trained a parent, we have trained, a, it could be another staff member, we have trained another staff member to serve as the liaison. Would you like to be the liaison? You know, I think that there are a number of ways. I, I You know, we have talked about it quite a bit at USA Gymnastics about how do we manage this? Especially with parents with very, very young children. And there's only one hour so it's like they drop they have a one hour class parents don't want to go back home because by the time they get home they have to come back so they're, they're they want to stay so I, I think it's a conversation of figuring out how do we get through the summer with this until it transitions back if it does hopefully it will to either a, a higher uh, uh, occupancy or until there is um, a time that we go to full capacity this is why I said please call me because to put out information for that blankets every club that has the situation um, changes per state. And so what I like to do when I have these conversations with the clubs is I look up the state regulations and then I try to figure out what's being asked of them and then we try to marry the safe sport policy at the same time. And it is incredibly individual and we have found some very creative solutions with uh, some clubs because it's based off of your size, it's based off of your abilities um, to manage this type of stuff. So I have to know all the situations. Um, I don't, that's probably not the answer everybody wanted, but it's the best I can do with that well, one. It's a very difficult answer because I can certainly understand from my own perspective it being a struggle when a parent does come to you with um, the concern of online streaming and, you know, uh, it's an either or for them, right? I can tell you from our experience in the childcare industry, um, 99% of your families are either going to be okay with this or really just genuinely excited that this is a new feature offered by um, your facility and their ability now to stay connected. The handful of parents who come to you with concerns or questions, we do provide marketing materials for you guys to kind of address some of the security standpoints. But at the end of the day, too, is if from a business model standpoint, if you guys choose that this is the direction that you guys want to go, and if there's a parent who does give you the ultimatum where, you know, if you do this, I can't stay or, you know, what have you, you know, the realities are from a business standpoint, and I know this isn't maybe, uh, it's, it's still difficult to say, but um, you're choosing, you know, the 10 or 12 new enrollments that'll probably be brought in from a concept like this over the next 60, 90 days 
versus the one parent who really just can't get over the idea of online streaming um, and, and, and the securities around it. And, and, and you know, I, I get it. I get the struggle, but it's kind of a business model strategy going forward that you commit to and everyone at the facility, um, you know, gets on board with. Awesome. All right. So there's a couple questions that kind of um, branch off of this. So just aside from, you know, parents not wanting their child to be um, live streamed or videotaped, what about security in situations where parents or certain adults are not supposed to be able to see, be around, or know a child is in the building? Um, and also foster children that aren't allowed to be in pictures or videos that are sometimes in the class with other children that can be photographed and videotaped? Great question. And we see this the same on the child care side all the time with foster children. Um, reality is they're signing off the same media release forms um, that, um, you know, to be a part of the gym. It, again, Spot TV is an extension of your existing open door policy. So no mom or dad who wouldn't be able to tune in or walk through your front door shouldn't be able to have access to your online feed through Spot TV. Um, you know, with the parent registration, parent approval, uh, count uh, session settings, um, the session timeouts, I would challenge that and say it's almost more secure and more isolated um, in Spot TV than it is in that child being at the local Walmart or local Home Depot or something like that, where there's cameras all the time or they're just open in public, where Spot TV is, is really narrowed down to the approval process, the class viewing session, uh, the parent viewing on the mobile app, the, all the stream shield features, I mean, we're really isolating it down to an individual experience of the approved mom viewing uh, as if she was able to view on site. And it's even more limited because if you're on site in a viewing area, you're seeing more than, you know, the camera view that you're giving. So, or even isolating it further than your on site viewing. Great. Thank you for that. Um, next question. We are a dance studio. As a regular rule, we max out our classes at 12 with the exception of our acro classes and competition team. How could it be possible to have families A through L come this day and M through Z come another day for our larger groups? What suggestions do you have? Uh, I can answer that. Um, so that was used by some of our clubs um, when they had team. They had, they had to make choices between uh, team parents and rec parents. And so they created this very, they had a very small gym. They had this very complex viewing schedule where, because they could only have at most 15 to 20 people in their waiting area, but they had a ton of kids on the floor. So they just basically created a schedule. And, um, and one of the schedules that they used was for their team families where they were there, the kids were there like all week long. They were saying, okay, mom and dad um, of, of, of the girls team, we would, if you have the last name that starts with A, we would really like it if you were here Monday through Thursday. Um, and then they would have a Tuesday, Thursday schedule and then a Saturday schedule because they just couldn't have so many people. I can't really speak to how you would do it because I'd have to look at the individual situation, but that's just what they did. And, um, and we've heard that there have been similar things set up and or parents will sign up saying, I would like to see this day. And, they, and then they kind of give it like you get once a week. You know, they're doing this, the clubs that have those issues, it's a size issue, it's um, a capacity issue. And you were having parents who wanted to be there three hours the whole time, all week long. But that just wasn't realistic and it actually wasn't fair. So they created a more fair system that allowed parents to sign up and then they could, uh, then it was up to the parents to pick and choose. And then a lot of parents didn't want to come. Like they were like, I don't, I have things to do. And so then that parent who wanted to be there more often could fill in for that slot. Um, it's just, it, it was a creative solution that they used. Good. It's all about creative solutions right now. Is what I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next with the stream shield tech, will the administrators know who is trying to record? Uh, right now, we are alerted and providing reports per request. Is that how it's working, Sam? 
Correct. Uh, so at this point in time, it's, you know, we, we are getting them internally and we'll create a report for each location that we can get to them as well. Um, and I think it, that is on the, the dev list as part of some of the new updates that are going to be coming out that where it'll be sent to uh, the gym owner administration as well too. What we do in, term of, in terms of our internal process too with that is uh, on their first screenshot and if they do get locked out, um, we get we worked a reapproval re process with them re-agreeing to the terms of service on Spot TV's website. Um, if it happens a second or third time, they, they become a multiple offender of trying to take a screenshot, is that's when we let you guys know, um, um, you know, that this is kind of reoccurring and, you know, we kind of need to address it with them. Just from a privacy standpoint, we know a lot of times it is innocent. And the first time is, you know, oftentimes possibly an accident. They may not have read the uh, initial pop-up in the app when they log in, but, um, once they do have their first instance and they, you know, it's a continued thing, we'll know and, you know, we'll kind of let you guys know and uh, see how we can handle it with the parent and, and make sure they understand why it's, it's in there. Yeah. It's, it's really funny because um, especially that first time, like Bob said, it's, it's usually just an accident or, you know, it's almost like muscle memory when they click the buttons to take a screenshot of something that we all do uh, all day with, um, you know, websites and articles and Amazon, I'm sure we're all on Amazon buying tons of useless stuff right now too. But um, generally we get that conversation with mom the first time and mom blames dad and dad blames mom and, you know, grandma says she blames grandpa. So it's really funny to, to listen. But then as soon as that initial conversation is over, they're super excited that this is actually part of the system um, and love that feature. And then as Bob alluded to, when we get to that second or third, when we get you guys involved, but we also have the verbiage in place to let them know that this is leaning towards, you know, a, a suspension of an account or even deletion based upon, you know, what the center wants to do at that point. Absolutely. Well, we have gone 30 minutes over and I don't know if these guys have any more meetings or <laughs> calls to get to, but we do have a list of all of the questions that we didn't get to. Um, if you guys would like me to distribute them to you and we can reach out to people. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yes, we'll definitely take care of And that. I think some of you are gonna benefit from a discovery call. Um, so I definitely encourage you to set that up as well. Yeah, a lot of the individual questions, just go to the Spot TV website, um, www.spottv.pro, and then right on there is a schedule a discovery call, and that'll really be able for us to go deep dive into Spot TV. And then same thing with Shelba over at Safe Sport. Reach out specifically to her on some of the Safe Sport uh, questions and, and, and guidance on that end, too. And we've also, we've also worked really closely with Spot TV, so they're very aware of our Safe Sport guidelines. So when they're setting up, they can keep, they will be able to keep everything from a safe sport perspective in mind. And um, so a lot of the questions that we can answer, they can answer as well. So we, we've had a very close relationship for the past uh, couple of years. Yeah, we'll, we'll pass an email back and forth. If I have, if someone asks the same right question and we're just not 100% sure, we'll add in Shelbo, you know, just so we can collaborate properly and, and make sure we have the right path forward for you. Absolutely. And if you're a Jackrabbit client, um, we do have the exclusive partnership with Spot TV that allows our two platforms to integrate. Um, so they're very aware of how our parent portal works. And obviously, if you can't reach them, you can connect through us and I can connect you over. So um, I will let everybody get back to their day. We will send the recording out. Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope that you got lots of valuable information out of this, that this created some brainstorming ideas for you. Um, and we are all here if you need anything else. So hope you all have a great day and we'll chat soon. Thanks guys. Thank you. Appreciate it everybody.